Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to visit conduit bending. Now, I will have a talking session with you so you guys understand the fundamentals of bending. This is very important. I'm not gonna be giving you a lecture, but I will say a couple things. First off, I'm going to tell you the very basics so you can get started, so you can understand, so you can start thinking for yourself how to bend these conduit bends super easy. We are going to start out with the box offset. Now, I do teach electrical apprentices, basically, uh, in a high school setting in a technical center. Now, I will tell you that in the book, there is a formula of how to bend the box offset. Now, it's not my preferred method, but I do teach it only because I want people, you and all my students, to get in the rhythm of making every single bend look identical. Because if you have, you know, multiple bends in a single wall and you have all these different lengths of your bends, you know, to me, and you're looking down that wall, it looks like poop on a white rag. So what you wanna do is you wanna have every bend be exactly the same. Now I do teach what my method is, and then I teach on this bender what the book will teach you. And I'm gonna teach you both ways right here, right now. But actually I'm gonna teach you this book method first, and then the next video will be with the method I prefer to use. Now it's not anything different, but it all depends multiple things depends on who is bending like if you have multiple people bending you know you want to match kind of what they have so if they're all using the method that the book teaches then that's probably what you want to go with but regardless i'm going to teach you both ways two different videos you're going to get the benefits of both super easy no math is involved in the second video that i'm going to do so you may want to pay attention now we also are going to go down in a series of bends. We're gonna go from the box offsets, we're gonna go to just regular offsets, we're gonna talk about three-point saddles, we're gonna do four-point saddles, we're gonna talk about shrinkage because a lot of people, when they bend the three-point saddles, it starts to shrink and then it looks like, once again, poop on a white rag. So, we're not gonna go talking about too much on three-point saddles, I just wanna get the basics of the box offsets down. All right, let's get started. Now, if you guys are familiar with bending at all, or if you're not, this is gonna be either a refresher or the first time you ever heard this. So with the multipliers, we're gonna be bending this at five degrees. Now, if you are familiar with the cosan chart, cosecant, cosant, whatever, however you wanna say it, I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole again, but if you want to know where that is, I will link a book down below where you can buy this book. I'm gonna show you what it is real quick because it is very, very helpful. And it is called The Uglies Book. Now this right here has so much information in here. And if you look in the back, it has your cosan chart. Natural trigonometry functions. Now, we're gonna be bending this at five degrees, so if you scroll all the way over to five degrees, it's 11.4737, that is your multiplier. So we're just gonna say it's 11.4. So we need a box offset, which is roughly about half of an inch or so. Well, that's what we're gonna say, we're just gonna keep it real easy. And it's about 5.75 or five three quarter. We're just gonna bump it on up to right at about six. So that's why we're gonna be putting our mark from the end of the pipe, hook our tape measure to it, I'm gonna bring you down here and show you. We're gonna hook it to you. We're gonna pull the two inch mark. We're gonna put a mark on it. Then we're gonna go down to the eight inch mark and we're gonna put a mark on it. That'll give you six inches between your marks. Five degrees is the bending point. Now we are also gonna be using a Sharpie, which most people on most of these platforms don't like, but I'm telling you straight up, we are gonna be using a Sharpie. It's for visual purposes, so you can see. Now, you might say, if you've ever looked at a bender, or if you haven't, well, you're gonna look right here. On this particular bender, there is no five degree mark. I don't know really any benders, and I'm not saying there isn't one that has it, but for the most part, I've never seen one with a five degree mark. So, having said that, you have to go, basically from the starting point, to midways of your 10 degree bends. Now, what you need to pretend 
that you see here, which obviously is not, if we were going to 10, this line just keeps going. So you have to take your bottom of your pipe to that bottom of that line. That's where it needs to pretend to sit. So when you're looking down the pipe and you're bending, you want to see where that is. Now, we only are going to go halfway through here. Chances are, when you bend with this method, it will almost always be correct. I know it sounds crazy, but it's very seldom that I bend or anybody in my class bends and they actually get it wrong because this is such a good method. Now, is it the easiest method? I don't know. It's, it's more time consuming than the second version I was going to show you, but that's for a different video. So make sure that you stay tuned. So I'm going to put the camera facing down at the table. I'm going to show you how to measure this on the piece of pipe. Then we're going to bend it. And I'm also going to give you a little tip, what I suggest that you do so you don't get this wrong. Don't waste time. Don't waste your journeyman's time. Don't waste your time. Keep the job productive. I'm going to show you what I did, what I almost always have done in the past, especially when I'm running a lot of conduit before I was very good at bending fast. So let me show you what I did. Let me show you how to bend this. Let me show you how to mark it. We'll stick it in the box. And then we're going to end this video. All right, like I mentioned, we're going to use our tape measure here. We'll pull it out. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and just keep to the side so you can see exactly what I'm doing here and try to keep in frame. Shouldn't be any problem. So we're going to mark at two inches and then we're going to mark at eight inches. Now what that did, I told you was the cosant was five degrees. I told you to multiply five and three quarter, but we're just going to bump it up to six because that's just basically what you do. If you always remember what the numbers are, you can never go wrong. Two and eight. That puts six inches between your marks. See what I did there? So I marked it at two, then I marked it at eight because two minus eight is six. Or if you can't figure that out quick enough, you can just put it right there and you can remark again. Now on this mark right here, the first mark, I don't really recommend writing the whole circle around, but you're gonna be using a pencil when you're really in the trade because most journeymen don't like a Sharpie. Luckily for me, the journeyman I work with didn't give two craps, so we just did Sharpie all the time because a lot of stuff was up high and you couldn't see it anyway. And then, of course, you can rub it off. But regardless, this is where you're going to put it. You're going to put it right here at the arrow of your bender. And also on this Klein bender, it has a little notch on the top. I'm going to flip you around here and you can see. So we'll put it in. And we're going to bend it at five degrees. So we're going to look down here. We're going to put our mark right there on the pipe. I mean on the bender. So they are really lined up together. And then we're going to pretend that we know where the five degree is, which we do not. So we're just going to have to guess between the two marks. We also want to make sure that when we bend this, we do the other side exactly the same. We're going to bend down. We're going to flip it 180 degrees and we're going to bend it again at the same five degree mark. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's just a little bump. I'm going to say about that should be about right. And we're going to flip it around, line your mark up to the top of your arrow, flip it 180 degrees. We're going to look down the pipe. We're going to sight it so it's right or left. It's not going to be a dog leg. It looks pretty good. And then we are going to, once again, bend it about where we did last time. So that should be a box offset. So let's take it to the table and see what happens. All right, moment of truth. Damn near perfect. And I'm not exaggerating, guys. Um, I'm just gonna show you. I didn't turn the camera off so you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it running. I'm telling you, with this method, it's almost flawless. I mean, look at this, guys. I mean, it looks perfect. So, you saw there was no magic editing and it looks really, really good. I'm going to go ahead and pause it now so I can get the camera back on the tripod. You guys saw it firsthand. There it is, right in there. It's a good looking offset. However, I do have a quicker way to do it without pulling all the measurements. And I'm going to show you on the next video. But I think if you just do that, remember, your multiplier, I mean, it's a little bit more than a half inch. I did say, so don't be like, well, that you're wrong because it's five and three quarter. Yeah, you could probably do it in five and three quarter and when it came out right because you're going to, it's so minute that you probably wouldn't even see it anyway, but two and eight, six inches between your marks. 
Remember that. Hook it here, two, and then go to eight. That's six inches between your marks. That is the multiplier. That is the correct way to do it. Put it in there, bend it five degrees, turn it 180 degrees, bend it again. You want to slide your pipe, make sure there's no dog leg, and then you want to pull your second bend in. So two and eight, five degrees, flawless. Now, I'm gonna leave this video right here. If you guys are interested in seeing what I consider to be a good pair of linesman's pliers, not a pair of Kleins, click right here in this video. If this video or any of my videos have given you any value, please smash that thumbs up, subscribe. It does help this channel. Leave me a comment down below what you wanna see and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day.